The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, uh, good afternoon, folks. And the first chart that I posted into uh, Tiger TV today was the chart of the NASDAQ. That's the stock that led us up and went above the highs of uh, December 31st. We did not do that uh, in the New York Stock Exchange Index or several of the other indices that we watch, but the, New the NASDAQ certainly did. What's important is we came down very hard, as you remember, down 200 NASDAQ points into uh, last Friday. We bottomed on Monday and we rallied uh, for three days, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday until early last night during the President's speech. And the, the rally was a perfect A, B equals C, D uh, pattern. Uh, it took out the lows of uh, Monday, which is, uh, which is uh, excuse me, a Friday, which was a very, uh, very bad sign. Uh, it still has a chance because if it can reverse today that this was a, a false breakout to the downside. Uh, but if it closes below the low that we made last Friday, look out, folks. This thing's going to drop uh, at least another 100 NASDAQ points. Uh, as you probably are aware, uh, you know, Apple's under a great deal of pressure. Um, and um, that's, that's not unusual because that stock had had a pretty good rally. But um, the, all of the stocks, the New York Stock Exchange Index, uh, it couldn't even rally to the 25% level, let alone the 382. The S&P could didn't quite make the 382 level, but that's uh, you know that's what we're watching here uh, today. Because if we have this bad close, it's going to look uh, rather nasty, uh, rather nasty on the charts as, as as far as we can see. Now we have a our first question uh, comes from uh, New Jersey, and it's about the uh, the real estate ETF for China, and that is the uh, TAO. And as you can see, we've had. Uh, three uh, lower tops and we're forming our lower bottoms right now. This goes back uh, into January of last year. Um, that's the one year chart uh, on this. Uh, I'm going to also post in the uh, chart the very, very long term going back to 2012. In fact, I should do, uh, let's just do the weekly here and we'll just see how far, because it doesn't look too bad on the weekly. Uh, it's making, in fact, it's making a Gartley here down a little bit lower uh, around the, uh, let me see, that would be the price of around uh, about another 10% lower would be would be having a Gartley formation forming on the um, the ETF for the Chinese real estate. It's had a pretty good break, you know, of about 15 or 20%. The the FXI, which you know Basil covered, you know, very uh, uh, exclusively and uh, proficiently, I might add. Uh, on his program, so I'm not going to to to, to bring that out because it, it's it's on its way down. It really uh, it, it doesn't have any support except for a little bit lower. There'll be a seven eight six uh, level coming in around that time, but until that occurs, it doesn't look like we have much of a uh, a big chance of the market uh, you know having much of a rally from the uh, from that level. So it's important to. To keep in mind, I'm watching uh, you know several commodities uh, that are important as far as you know whether we're going to have a, a flight to quality or you know anything of that nature. And uh, one of the ones that I wanted to put up today, of course, would be the um, the hourly chart on the on the gold market. And <clears throat> you'll be able to see that we've had some very nice symmetrical patterns forming here uh, in the gold. We, uh, we came down uh, two days ago and we made a beautiful 61% retracement with three higher bottoms down at that uh, 1252 level. And then today's high was an exact 61% retracement uh, to the exact penny from the high that we made back at uh, on Sunday night at 1282. So um, as long as gold can hold above this 1252 level, it still looks uh, pretty good. But we could have a correction down to 1256, you know, without uh, any trouble, uh, you know, at all. However, I wanted to I wanted to bring something to your attention, and I, I think we've uh, 
we've talked about this before, and it's it's, it's commodities, but it's all related. So let's just uh, keep it among friends here, and we'll see if we can get this uh, chart up. It'll only take me a second to show you the the difference of what's going on, and it could be. Uh, related to what's going on in all of the markets that we're seeing as far as the weakness that's coming across. And that is the relationship between the uh, silver uh, and the gold. If you'll notice, you know, gold went up and made the 61% retracement of the high we made Sunday night. And as you can see, silver has had uh, one, two, three, four lower tops now since uh, January 14th when gold broke, you know, gold broke out on the 17th to the upside. And we've had four lower highs now in silver, and, and today's silver has already corrected 78% uh, of the move that we had last night. And so it's telling you that there's a lot of selling coming into silver along with some other things. We've got copper uh, has come down, and it's uh, you know very close to uh, making a Gartley on the downside, down around 322. So whether this uh, weakness is telling us that there's some deflationary things, you know, coming into the air, you know, we have to wait and see. This is this is what we don't know for sure. And, of course, we never know anything for sure. The only thing we can do is control our risks. So all I'm saying is, uh, you know, gold uh, it does look okay right now, but the fact that silver is not following along with it is very troublesome because, you know, they view silver as the poor man's gold, and that makes a, a big difference. Uh, you know, what because you, you have to – they usually go hand in hand. The correlation of these markets is – in the neighborhood of about uh, 90 percent so because they are precious metals and and I love silver the problem is is it tarnishes so doggone easily uh, because of the, the sulfur in our bodies and that makes it uh, you know really really difficult to uh, uh, you know and and the other thing in silver is, is bad is you can't you can't transport silver as much because a bag of silver uh, of a thousand you know a thousand coins of 10 cent coins, thousand dollar face value of silver weighs 54 pounds, you know, and that's uh, you know that that's not a lot of silver. Whereas you can carry, you darn right it is. You can carry, you can carry gold. Now before we could before we could own gold, I was always collecting 1964 and pre 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 1964 silver coins, and I was moving around a lot because I was working for Eli Lilly, and I was uh, you know getting different jobs. Uh, they called them promotions at the time. And uh, I, whenever I went through an airport moving, I always had to have a little dolly, and I had these uh, wooden boxes that I kept my, my silver in. I, carried, I had about four, four bags, which was several, several hundred pounds, and uh, I would check it in, uh, and then I'd have to have a dolly to, uh, you know, to take it out to the car. So anyway, uh, the, the, the smart part that I ever did with that stuff was when it got to $30,000 uh, a bag, and I was in it at face value. Uh, I knew that uh, you know I'd have to pay for my college educations for my children, and so I I put that away for my uh, my kids' college educations, and it uh, turned out to be the be one of the better better things that I had ever done. But uh, it, this brings back a lot of memories. I should I should bring this up to you because a lot of you got, you guys don't know this, but back in the 80s when silver and gold were going crazy and the Hunt brothers were trying to take everything over. This was January of 1980. Uh, when silver was going up, it went up a limit, I believe, 22 days in a row, as I recall. The uh, limit at that time was 50 cents. And uh, the, uh, the market would go up the limit, but the problem was with the bags of silver, which were being traded by the coin dealers in the, the Los Angeles area, and believe me, I, I was the hedger for about five of the largest uh, coin dealers uh, in the United States, uh, Western United States at that time when I was at Drexel, and we were watching the price of bags, and the price of bags should have been about around $42,000, and yet the bags never got any higher than 36000 That's because there was really very little trading between $45 an ounce and $54 an ounce, which was the absolute high, and at that time, the, uh, the Chicago Comics board of directors, most of them were, were already short. They put out a rule saying no more short sales, and we're going to increase margins by 200%. In other words, to own silver, you have to put up 200% of the value of the silver if you want to sell it. Now, hmm, what do you think that did to the short side of the market? Well, guess what? It went down for 22 days. And uh, so it was uh, rather, rather wild times. But they... Um, 
they did uh, El Nelson Bunker Hunt. They did a number on he and his brother um, uh, Lamar, and uh, it uh, they still they still made you know they still were billionaires, but they lost a great deal of money on the shenanigans that went on at that time. But uh, boy, those were those were crazy times. I I can remember them like yesterday, but boy, it was. Uh, it was definitely crazy. So we have to remember. Hopefully, we won't do that again. When the market went up uh, this time in silver, when it hit forty-nine dollars, it did it very easily with lots of volume. And uh, you know, when the volume got up there, the open interest started to drop, which means there were no new players coming into the market. And that's what we have happening in in gold and silver now. We're not having any new players coming into the market, and that makes it for a really tough for the bulls to uh you know to keep this thing you know moving and you know i'm bullish gold but it really has got to get moving to the upside here otherwise it's going to look very very suspicious especially the fact that it can only make a 61 percent retracement today when the rest of the market was uh you know having a you know field day to the upside so um you know those are things that we we need to uh you know keep uh, keep in mind as we're as we're going through this uh thing today we got the dow down about 123 right now it it also took out the low of last uh, friday and again i if we close uh if, if we get below those lows again later in the day and we close badly today folks uh this is a wednesday thursday friday this is not going to look good and if this market closes right on its you know, uh, Keister on uh, on Friday. Uh, you don't want to be long coming into uh, 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 the the, the uh, into the market. We've got a new moon coming in. Um, that'll be, I believe, on Saturday. That's the uh, Chinese New Year, the year, the year of the horse. And uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be very very interesting here. Uh, what happens with this uh, with this market as we come into uh, Friday? But like I like I mentioned, if we can hold today's lows and turn around and close strong, uh, we we've got a chance for some more of a rally. But uh, the fact that we only hit the 382 last night, the bulls were in control at that time. Again, all they had to do was to push it up, and uh, they they were not able to do that. So whether that's going to have a uh, profound effect. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, that's the way I look at it from a technical basis. It's hanging in there. Um, gold's really, gold really needs to hold the um, the twelve fifty six level. That would be the the retracement back. We're still up eleven dollars uh, in gold. We're only up ten cents in silver, which is uh, not a very good sign. Platinum is barely uh, up on the day. It's basically unchanged, and copper is is down a penny. So. These are the things that we're uh, that we're watching now to, to see the overall market. We need to take a look. We're probably going to have to do it after the break is uh, is comes here. But uh, after the break, we need to take a look at the Treasury bonds because uh, they always talk about a flight to quality to bonds. And got the Dow uh, down 120, Nasdaq down uh, 14, S and P down 11. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, is going up in price again at the end of this month. Andy's weekly newsletter has delivered multiple profitable trades for his subscribers, even including a triple-digit winner within recent months. Right now is a perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy will also be hosting a subscriber event on Thursday, January 30th, Seasonality in Energy and Agricultural Commodities, that you can gain access to by simply signing up for a free trial to Andy Heck's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. A 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, a free 60-minute live online webinar with Andy Hecht, which will be archived, and you lock in the low price of $49 a month should you decide to continue after your 30-day free trial. Offers don't get much better than this. Act now before January is over and this offer passes you by. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, I was uh, I'm showing you the uh, Treasury bonds going back uh, to last April and the fact that we've had this major bottom that occurred uh, down at the 61% retracement on the weekly. I'll show you that in a little bit. But we've made the 61% retracement from the October highs. We haven't popped through it yet. That's around the 134 level. But there's certainly a possibility that we could do that. And the reason for that possibility is going to be seen on the next chart. And that is we put up the weekly chart of the Treasury bonds, and you can see we could easily make the 138 level. And that level would not be any more than a retracement of the uh, move down from the 61% retracement at 127 uh, going up to uh, 137 and change. That would be equal to the rally that we had back in early uh, 2013 when the market rallied up uh, uh, six or eight points to a 61% retracement. So we have made uh, a bottom. We, we've talked about that before, the fact that it hit that exact 61% retracement. Uh, just like the gold did at that 1177 level. So uh, all things are go right now. We're right at the 61% retracement of the yearly high from um, uh, early from 2014 to where we were uh, back in October. We don't have to go very much higher. Above the uh, 134 level would certainly uh, trigger a move to the 137. Now we haven't seen a, a flight to, to or any a flight to quality uh, uh, or a panic of any kind. So uh, as of yet, that doesn't mean it can't happen. But uh, you know, we still have a situation where you've got uh, a lot of people that are uh, you know rather complacent, looking to buy this. Uh, this retracement and that might be the the exact same there might be the the right thing to do but we have to uh, you know wait and see if we go below uh, the lows if we close below the low 
uh, that we made uh, on uh, this this past uh, Monday, uh, Friday. If we go below that low but between now and Friday and close lower on Friday, then you're going to see the uh, the possibility of uh, of a panic type of situation. That would be what I would uh, what I would be uh, expecting uh, to see. Now we're going to take a uh, a look at and show you the, uh, the difference between the uh, 30-year bond and the notes because the notes are the shorter term paper and they're much bigger uh, in in volatility. Well, no, not much bigger in volatility, but a lot more volume because there's so many of them. It's about six times the volume in the notes as we have in the bonds, and they are also uh, you know in the same area where we have uh, with Treasury bonds. There used to be a little divergence. Uh, that happened in December. Uh, notes would, were not able to make a newer low from September. That was another reason that telling us that we were getting ready to probably rally in rates. In other words, um, the bonds to uh, rally and, and rates to go lower. That, I meant rates to go lower. When rates go lower, bonds go up, and that's what we were looking for, and that's what we're having. We're looking for another three or four points at least in the in the notes if they do the same thing, and you know, at least four points uh, in the bonds uh, also. So there's no there's no panic of any kind, you know, showing in any of the markets right now. And I think the the best way to look at that would be to just to take a look at the at the VIX index because uh, um, Basil always covers it, but it's uh, it's always good to see it uh, see it again. I mean, it's doing virtually nothing today with the Dow down 120 points. And that's telling you that there's just basically no fear in the market. Uh, the market's going to have to get below that low that we made on Friday, and then we could get a move possibly up to 20. But, folks, if we get a move in the VIX above 20, the distance between 20 and 40 is not very far. And I wanted to do the long-term chart on this to show you what could happen if, in fact, this does occur, uh, you know, these, uh, there's no reason to, for anybody to be super bearish here, uh, except somebody like me. But uh, this is, uh, you'll see that if we do pop above that 20 level, uh, it doesn't take uh, much of an imagination to see us reach the mid-30s without too much. And that's, that would still be in a bear market because, remember, we were at 90 in this puppy way back in uh in March of uh, 2000, when they told us uh, the world was coming in and the banks were were too big to fail, well, if uh, J Jamie Dimon would have lost his 19 billion dollars during that March, I'm sure he wouldn't be uh, the uh, the bell of Wall Street now. So, uh, but anyway, that's all timing, and you know, timing is what what makes things go up. Anyway, um, the uh, the one thing that I wanted to, to reiterate, and I'm going to say it over and over again as much as I can, if we close below the low that we made on Monday, that's 12, uh, 1768 in the S&P. I'll cover that after a Dow down about a 130. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com. BI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we've had a question from uh, a caller from uh, Denmark, and his question was, uh, why was I so adamant about the market closing lower today than it did on Monday? And the reason for that is I'm going to post the chart of the New York Stock Exchange Index uh, of what it's done over the last month. And as you can see, we topped back on uh, December 31st, which was the new moon. And we've got the next new moon is due tomorrow. And uh, if you'll notice that the uh, 382 retracement uh, that happened when we were open in the overnight markets in the NASDAQ and the S&P, and the Dow Jones, they made the 382 retracement, but the New York Stock Exchange Index was not able uh, to do that. And as you can see, the New York Stock Exchange has not taken out the uh, low of Monday as of yet. That comes in at 99.39, and we're trading at around 10,005 right now. So that's why that particular uh, chart is so you know so very important because I watch these these little ABCD patterns all the time. As a matter of fact, while we've been on the air, we've had a ABCD pattern stop exactly at the 50% level uh, of the NASDAQ. It stopped spot on uh, right where it was. It's dropped about 20 points uh, since that point. So if you're, you're using short-term trading methodologies, these are some of the things that you, you can use to help you enter the market without... Uh, you know, risking an arm and a leg, but it doesn't always uh, work that way because you know this is all about probabilities. It's never, it's never about uh, certainty. Now we want to go to the uh, currencies next because uh, you know the way these markets move, uh, money flows. Uh, 
you know, very, very quickly. And we had a uh, really uh, exciting move. Um, well, for, for foreign currency traders, uh, we did anyway. We had a very exciting move last night uh, in the euro. It, uh, it uh, came right down and stopped exactly at the 61% retracement with the, uh, with the euro coming in exactly at the uh, 136 level to the exact penny. We rallied well over $700. Whoops, I forgot to post it into the room. That would be a good idea since there, so everybody could see it. And uh, we've rallied about $700 in that. Uh, we're still having lower tops over the past week, so we need the euro, if it's going to be bullish, to get above the 137 level. But frankly, I think the U.S. dollar has made a stand here at this level of 80, and it should hold up, you know, really uh, without too much trouble. We've got a lot of support. Uh, excuse me, a lot of resistance up around the 137 level. However, we do have some support around 135 in the euro. So that's something else that uh, uh, would probably be uh, taken into uh, consideration. Uh, I've had a question to uh, about Apple because uh, we've talked about Apple in the past and the earnings and stuff. And as, as you all are aware, the earnings turned out to be, uh, you know, rather poor. And I believe we were looking at the hourly chart when we posted that last uh, uh, Monday when we were on the air. And we were looking at this. We certainly did. And you can see what happened. What, let me get this posted in here so we can all see it. I keep thinking I'm talking to myself, and I'm not. Sometimes when I talk to myself, that's my best conversation of the day. Anyway, uh, you'll see that we're down near the $500 level. We hit that, uh, that level, uh, which is it goes beyond the ABCD pattern that we were looking at. But that just extends. So what you would do is you would go to your daily chart next and see where the next support comes in. And uh, I'm going to uh, clear this out just a little bit because we've gone below the level of support. We knew that that 530 would be good, but we've had a big gap down, folks. We gapped down almost 10 percent in in Apple last night, and that was coming off of the ABCD pattern. And uh, right now, it stopped. Uh, today's low was an exact 61% retracement of the low from, from last September. So this is another reason why this NASDAQ is so important, because the, uh, you know, we've got this big gap down. Uh, Apple is setting right at a 61% retracement of the low from September at $500 uh, a, a share. And if we go below that, and believe me, we are going below it. It's just not a question of if, it's a question of when. Because when you've got a gap like that of uh, just about 10%, it is 10% uh, in, a, in a stock as big as Apple, and it's one of the most widely held stocks in the world, uh, that, that means a lot, folks. We've already seen you know what gaps mean and some of these other things that we've looked at like uh, Tesla and a few others but uh, this market looks like it's going to uh, you know get down uh, below five hundred dollars without uh, well it's only five hundred ninety cents now and all we needed to do is to go to 498 and it will break the uh, 61 percent retracement and it did it in three days and uh, one day with a you know ten percent down move so uh, Apple does not look good and remember Everybody loved Apple. Let's just go back for history, to history's sake, because when Apple was uh, was trading up around seven hundred dollars, we were we were yelling and screaming that there was something really wrong here because you left this big island back in in uh, early September of uh, 2012, and uh, then you had the big volume day on the downside, and, and that was around seven hundred. The gap down to uh, I believe six ninety three, and then the rest was history. It made a big A B C D move all the way down to the uh, 385 was the low, uh, I believe, and uh, then we had the ABCD rally up. So this is still in a this is still in a bear market. Ever since we made the ABCD to the upside, we've had lower tops. So uh, this is market is not uh, it's not in a bullish picture. Uh, I don't know anything. I don't own an a Apple product. I, oh, I, I, I own a Nano. I do own one of those, but I don't have uh, I don't have anything uh, other than that to uh, to look at. Now, uh, there's one other uh, chart that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention. That is uh, General Electric because um, uh, Basil brought that up, and I wanted to uh, take a look at that. Someone asked me to, to because General Electric is a good bellwether of the market. It used to be the the big, the biggest stock uh, to watch, 
and as you can see, uh, give me one second here. I want to finish the pattern here because we we made the uh, Gartley pattern uh, right on the high day at the at the new moon back on uh, January first. Uh, and uh, let me just put the General Electric chart in here. And we've had uh, a pretty big down move uh, into General Electric. Uh, we have not taken out the lows of Monday yet. That's still down around 24. There's another sign that that could also be be uh, uh, telling us that that's where uh, we might be. Uh, we might have some bounce uh, from this level. But General Electric still is very bearish. We've come down more than 10 percent in just a matter of uh, three weeks so that's not a that's not a, a very good sign because that's down a lot more uh, than the rest of the market so that's uh, one of the reasons why we want to keep a uh, keep an eye on that someone so, someone just uh, uh, dropped me a uh, an instant message through in the tiger TV Dan which is really great folks if you if you if you're home alone and you don't like trading alone the tiger TV uh, their Tiger Den is really great. There's some r really terrific traders in there. They share some great information, uh, and uh, it, it's really a, a really a good thing to have uh, to have them, uh, you know, to, to have that information out there because it's really it's really quite uh, it's really quite exciting when you uh, get some of this great information. And someone just said, you know, what is uh, what will happen to uh, you know the Nasdaq if Apple falls apart. Well, I don't know. All I know is that Apple is very, very weak, and the NASDAQ doesn't look very strong either right now. So the, the appearance is that it doesn't look like it's going to be very good if Apple breaks below you know, $500 a share on a closing basis, just like it would with the NASDAQ. We had a 382% retracement, and when you have those, you know what they are on the, uh, on the bull side. Let, let's just give you an example of, uh, of what happened on the bull side of one of these things that we talked about on the commodity hour uh, about a week or so ago it was in um, it was in natural gas give me a second here and I will uh, get it up here and you'll you'll see that we had a uh, you'll see that same ABCD formation right at the 382 level when it was trade trading at around 399 and from that level you'll see that the market uh, Oh dear, I hit the wrong one. Just give me a second. You can't let an Italian do two things at once. Give me one second. I posted the wrong chart. There we go. Uh, oh, let's make sure I get it right. Uh, I'm not even sure that's going to be right. Give me a second. I got to do this. Uh, there, I think I'm okay now. Walk and chew gum. That's it. Walk and chew gum. Baby steps. Okay, you'll see that the uh, na the natural gas made a uh, 382 retracement down here at the uh, uh, 399 level, and then we went straight up, you know, to the uh, 4 uh, 421 level. We backed off a little bit, and we've had a uh, really strong rally here, uh, you know, recently. So it's been uh, no, didn't miss. It. I'm just uh, I, I, what I've done is I've uh, pictures the tiger stand. Well, I'm let, let me try to do it again, folks. Let me let me give me a, give me one little break here. And I will try to do it again. I never said this job was easy. Hold on. Let's see if I can get the... Uh, oh, I know what I have to do. If I spread the chart out over the whole chart period, there's no way I can mess it up. And then I go back to the Tigers den like this. Okay. And then I click. And then I'll see if it works now. There we go. That should do it. I should hear a round of applause if I finally get it right. Well, we're, we uh, anyway. That's what happened when you had a 382 breakout to the upside. You see that there was a huge move coming. Whether that's whether that's going to continue or not, you know, we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. But it looks like that uh, I was finally able to get it right after three times uh, uh, getting it fixed. So we'll see if that is. Uh, if that is the case, um, what's <laughs> if you'll give me one second here? I wanted to double check uh, one other thing. Someone asked me to take a look. I know it's not the commodity hour, but they've asked me to take a look at uh, at crude oil, and I'm going to be happy to do that here in just a second. As soon as I can get the crude oil chart up, we've had uh, crude oil has been active, actually r relatively quiet here. We've been in this really tight trading range here for uh, quite some time. 
uh, bouncing off of the uh, 786 and then we came up to the 61 percent retracement uh, on the way uh, on the way up so uh, there's a lot of resistance at uh, 98 uh, dollar per barrel but if we can get above 98 it will break that long-term downtrend time trend line and also the 786 and that would take us uh, up into the to the 102 level but the way you know deflation seems to be hitting a lot of these markets it's uh, it's really uh, hard to imagine that that might be uh, might be something that uh, that is occurring oh um, we've had I've asked a request that someone asked me what my top three rules are as far as when when you when you if, if you're trading what are the, the things that you really need to know the most about what you're doing I think the first thing is is you have to quantify what you want to risk. In other words, you don't know what you're going to make on a trade ever. All you know is the probabilities are in your favor. Uh, you don't know whether it's going to be prop profitable or not. So the only thing is that you can do is correct yourself by by uh, you know controlling your risk. That's the only thing you can control in your risk reward uh, equation. The, the second thing uh, that you have to do is you must use stop protection. If you don't use stop protection, what you're doing is you're telling the market, I am smarter than you. And believe me, folks, nobody is smarter than the market. You know, there is no, you know, the old adage is, you know, men are often wrong, markets are never wrong. So if you're not using a stop, you've told the market, I have no fear, I have no risk, and uh, there's no way that you can hurt me. That's what you've done if you've not used a stop. If you use a stop, now you've protected yourself and you're able to get out of the position and you should be uh, you know okay you know after that but you must use a stop at all time and the third one which is I think is important uh, as the other uh, as the other two and this is the one that's uh, broken by uh, by almost all new traders and that is they average down in other words they they buy some at uh, 32 and then they buy some at 30 and then they buy some at 28 uh, we could use Apple as an as an example from 700 all the way down to uh, 385, and the people it bought all the way down still wouldn't be even. But uh, it's what it is. It's you buy some at 34, you buy some at 30, you buy some at 26. What you're doing is you're increasing your risk exposure when you're wrong in the market. Your analysis is wrong, either fundamental or technical. And pretty soon it's goodbye house, goodbye boat, goodbye car, goodbye wife. And there you go. So you got to use those rules to really uh, to stay. It's all about money management. You know, you never know whether you're going to be right or wrong in these markets. All you've got to do is to do your best and try to uh, protect yourself with the amount of risk that you possibly have. Now we're going to have some big moves in these markets during the. Uh, we got a, the Dow's down about 130, and we've got a break coming up here, I guess. And then we have a. Uh, uh, let's see. The yeah, Nasdaq is down about 15. S and P's down about 10. So we'll see if uh, if these markets will hold during this time. At the second part of the show, I want to reiterate the importance of you know where we ha where we close either today or tomorrow. You know, we had a really really strong market last night with the Dow up 100. It gave all all that back plus another 150. That is not a bullish sign. So we'll see here. Dow down 130. We'll be back in a moment. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin, here on TFNN. Okay, I'm back, folks, and uh, I've been asked to re reiterate the three rules. I'll do it very slowly, but the first rule is know what your risk before you go into a trade. He who knows not what he risks risks all. My good friend John Hill, who's 88, still trading actively, uh, he told me that and it's on my big oil painting here in the office. The second rule is always use a stop because if you don't use a stop you're telling the market I'm smarter than you are and I don't need any protection and that's absolutely wrong. And the third thing which I think is the most important, or one of the most important, is never add to a losing position because if you add to a losing position, your analysis is wrong. Okay, that's one thing. And the second thing is, is that uh, you know you're uh, increasing your risk and you're you're increasing your leverage at the wrong time. Increase your leverage when you're right, not when you're wrong. That's the that's the bottom line of uh, what we should be doing here. Now, the last chart that I posted in here on Tiger TV is the one that is very similar to the Dow Jones, only it went much higher than the Dow Jones did. Uh, the Dow Jones topped, you know, uh, several weeks ago, whereas the uh, transportations kept going up and up. And as you can see, after this big long-term ABCD was completed, we've had the big drop, but we still have not taken out Friday's highs, excuse me, Friday's lows in the transportations yet. So it's still holding 
you know, relatively firm. It might take a day or two to do that if it does it. But remember, on the long-term monthly chart of the Dow Jones transportation that we fit that we featured in our newsletter this week. It was 25 months up from 2009 to 2011. It was 25, 25 months up between 2011 to 2014. And those were within one week, folks. Those calculations were within one week. And it was a perfect AB equals CD pattern, which is the Thunderbolt, which is our one of our favorite patterns that we like to use. So that's telling us that something really uh, dramatic has happened. Uh, the $64 question is, is how dramatic is it going to be? They always say it's different this time, and I mo it most probably will be. We've got, you know, prop oh, I have to tell you the story about Turkey. You know, Turkey uh, raised their interest rates so that you can get 7.5% uh, now in your, in your passbook accounts over there. Well, that's really good because one morning you're going to come in, you're still going to have your 7.5%, but it's going to be 10% on the dollar. Mexico's done this twice. And uh, believe me, any time they start raising interest rates to get your money in there, folks, you should not walk away from it, run away from it. As a matter of fact, I'm offering 25% interest rates uh, here at the, um, the Italian Bank of Tucson. If you're interested in making deposits here, we have a 25% uh, passbook rate that we're giving. But that's a quarterly rate, too. We pay it every quarter. Uh, however, we do have a, a small caveat that uh, we, we work like the rest of the central banks. Anyway, Bernanke's going to give his final fare farewell talk today. That'll probably be enough to get the market to rally. He'll tell us that everything's going to be okay. But uh, whether it will be or not, you know, remains to be seen. So that's, the, that's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, watch, the, watch the close on um, where we were Monday. If we go below Monday's lows, uh, again, we've already done it in the... Uh, NASDAQ, and we've done it in the, uh, uh, we, did it, we, we did it in the Dow, but we have not done it in a few other things like the transportations and the S&P. Uh, the S&P is still about uh, 10 points away, but uh, there's always that possibility with uh, three more hours to go uh, in the trade. And keep an eye on the Treasury bonds, because if they bust above the 133 level, uh, that's telling you there's start to be a, a flight to quality, and that would be another reason. And also watch the VIX. If the VIX breaks above 18, then uh, that tells you that uh, 20 to 26 will most probably be the next level uh, if it goes. And remember, markets come down, you know, faster than they go up. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and thank God bless. told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion.